the beginning they used to think that we are crazy. We, are, we should start uh, protecting people instead of turtles. But now, they, everybody on the island, they know turtles are under protection. Of all of the hatchlings that go into the sea, probably only one in a thousand approximately will return as an adult in the future, which may be 20 or 30 years later. In the whole Mediterranean, there's approximately two to 3,000 female loggerhead turtles that nest every year, and about 10% of those nest in northern Cyprus. The green turtle is a lot fewer. There's only three to 400 females that nest every year, and about 30% of those nest in northern Cyprus. So it makes a very important site for both those species, both of which are endangered. Marine turtle species are particularly vulnerable, um, especially to things like development and climate change. But they're also quite resilient group of animals in that they have the ability to recover population levels dramatically if we only do the right things in protecting their habitats and protecting them. Marine turtles are normally what you'd class as a top, one of the top organisms in an ecological system. So what affects them is normally an indication of what is affecting the general environment. If it's affecting the general environment it also affects humans and other species. The hatchling turtles emerge at night time and make their way down to the water's edge using the moonlight as a guide. They're attracted to light and that's usually, the sea is usually the brightest place at night with the moonlight shining off the sea. Once they reach the water, they then head out to sea and they have about 24 to 48 hours where they can swim and swim and swim to get offshore before they need to eat anything. So it's a very important stage in this sort of frenzied behaviour when they head out to the open waters. Once they head out to the open sea, we don't usually see those turtles again until they reach about three to five years of age and they're about the size of a dinner plate. And then they come back into the inshore waters where they'll feed. Once the adults reach maturity, they migrate to their adult foraging grounds. From there, they will return to Cyprus every two to three years. They'll mate off the nesting beach and then they will breed. And females will usually mate with males around about 30 to 40 days before they lay their first clutch. And when they do come to breed, they'll lay up to five clutches uh, every two weeks apart. One of the fascinating facts about turtles is that females that will come to nest on this beach have actually themselves hatched out on this beach. Once the female has returned to the sea after laying her eggs, she never sees her offspring again. The eggs are left to incubate on their own in the beach. And after about 50 days incubation, hopefully the hatchlings will emerge. Unlike most animals, the sex of marine turtle hatchlings is actually determined by temperature and not by genes. And so if the nest is incubating at a very hot temperature, mostly female hatchlings will be produced. If it's cool, mostly males will be produced. In Cyprus, we find that most of the hatchlings that are being produced are females. So with climate change, this is potentially a problem. Females lay around 100 eggs in a clutch, and usually 60 to 70% of those will hatch, although some will fail completely. Even at this early stage of the life cycle, there's a lot of hatchlings that don't make it to the sea. I used to see a lot of turtles around here. And I used to read a lot that they're under protection. And we said, why shouldn't we start something here and protect them? And that's how we started, really. The Marine Turtle Conservation Project formally started in 1992. They were invited by the local Society for Protection of Turtles to come and help monitor and protect the turtles in northern Cyprus. They came out and did a basic survey of all the nesting beaches in northern Cyprus, of which there are over 80 beaches that have turtles nesting on them. And then since then, every year, a group of volunteers has come out. And that group of volunteers is Marine Turtle Conservation Project and they are based at Allegadi Beach and they do night work at Allegadi Beach and then other coastlines they monitor during the day. The project's basic aims are to protect marine turtles in northern Cyprus and in conjunction with the monitoring and nest protection we've built into that some research to try and to identify certain ecological aspects of marine turtles. Every year we send a group of students and staff out here to monitor the turtles that nest here, assess the threats and try to reduce those. We're also very involved with research, so we're very interested in the biology of the species because to understand the threats 
and try to manage the populations, we need to understand what they're doing. So this is now one of the longest research projects that has been ongoing, uh, not just by our research group, but also in this region. And it's providing lots of incredible information about the biology of the species. So it's a great showcase for marine tidal projects around the world. Our research over the last 20 years has shown what an important nesting beach Allegheny Beach is for marine turtles, not just in Cyprus but in the whole Mediterranean region. And it's fantastic that it's now a specially protected area as a result of that work. During the day in the nesting season we monitor lots of beaches during the daytime. Our main aim is to find nests and record them and then to protect them from predation. So we place screens, cages over the nests so that people who are using the beaches can see them and know to avoid those areas and so that animals can't get into the nest to destroy the eggs. Our night work involves intensively monitoring the beach here at Alagadi, which means that we walk the beach every 10 minutes and it's a two kilometre beach, so that's a lot of walking each night. And so the volunteers are usually pretty fit by the end of the season, having spent a long time walking up and down the beach. Their job is to find a turtle as she nests, uh, monitor her behaviour through the nesting process. Once the turtle is actually laying her eggs, it's okay to get a little bit closer. She, she goes into a kind of trance as she's laying her eggs and we can go up close and we can measure her and give her tags if we need to. She might be part of our research project, so she might be getting a satellite transmitter so we can see where she goes. And then we let her go back to the water on her own and hopefully we'll see her again in a couple of weeks and then hopefully we'll see her again a few years after that. And it's been fantastic that we've had some females that we have been seeing for 20 years coming to breed on this beach, so it's like seeing an old friend. Satellite tracking has told us an awful lot about the biology of marine turtles. We know that they come to North Cyprus to lay their eggs, but that's only a small proportion of their life cycle. That's only a few months every few years, and for the rest of the time, we don't know where they go. Satellite tracking has shown us that they actually spend most of the time in foraging grounds, either in North Africa or Turkey. Some of them remain in Cyprus, but the majority of them leave here. So once they've left this protected area, we need to try to ensure that the rest of their life cycle is spent somewhere where they won't be under threat. Some of the main threats to turtles in the Mediterranean are problems associated with human development of nesting beaches. Many of the nesting beaches in the Mediterranean have already been developed and many nesting beaches have been destroyed by hotels and road developments. Another problem that is light and noise pollution. When hatchlings come out of the nest, they follow the light of the stars and the moon on the horizon, so they head out to sea. But if there are lights at the back of the beach, from hotels or from road lighting, or they can go in the wrong direction and they spend too much time on the beach and the chances of them being eaten by predators is much higher. They may even still be there in the morning and just dry out in the sun. We're approaching these restaurants and trying to encourage them to use subtle lighting or red lighting which turtles cannot see. A lot of the rubbish that we see on the beaches and in the water is detrimental to turtles. If they eat enough of it, it can cause them to die. Not all of this marine debris is coming from Cyprus. The majority of it comes from elsewhere. So everybody has to do their bit to try to reduce this problem of rubbish in the Mediterranean. A natural threat is the potential for the sea to come over the nest and to inundate the nest and, and drown the nests. And that can lead to failures of eggs. So sometimes when we see nests that are laid very, very close to the water's edge, experienced volunteers can judge whether over a season that nest is likely to be lost to the sea. And if that's the case, we make the decision to move the nest further up the beach. So as soon as the nest is laid, we measure the egg chamber and we produce another nest of exactly the same di dimensions, but in a safer location. And then we relocate all of the eggs to that nest. By increasing the number of hatchlings that reach the sea, surely this is going to have a knock-on effect that more hatchlings eventually will manage to survive all of these threats and eventually return to Cyprus to lay their eggs on the beaches. Once hatchlings return to the coast to forage, there aren't that many threats because they reach a size where they're very difficult for predators to take them. If they're quite a large animal and they've got this very hard shell, but man is now starting to have an effect the greatest effect on the populations by the small-scale fisheries that operate here. As turtles come back to lay their eggs in Cyprus, 
a certain number of adults are, are taken. Every year we see dead turtles on the beaches that have been caught by fishermen and, and thrown overboard. These turtles that are stranded on the beaches are dead. Although it's, obviously it's very disheartening to see, it's an opportunity for us to find out more about the population. And we've realised that a lot of the turtles that are getting caught are juveniles. So it's likely that Cyprus is an area where juveniles come to forage. We're working quite heavily with the fishery now, building up participatory research with specific fishermen. Most of the fishermen know that we're doing this work. They have our number and when, they're, when they catch turtles, quite often they call us and this enables us to, to see which turtles are being affected by the fishery. And it also enables us to tag turtles that we've been, never had access to before, juvenile turtles that never ever come to the beaches. We've given a lot of educational materials to fishermen. If fishermen have a turtle that they've caught and if the turtle's in distress, we were able to go to the turtle to help the fishermen to untangle the turtle and release the turtle. A lot of the fishermen in North Cyprus and the rest of the Mediterranean don't really understand the problems that turtles are facing. So through this educational outreach effort, we're, we're making them aware that turtles are endangered and they are in need of protection. And actually they're protected by law. There are so few left. I mean, once the population in the Mediterranean was so big that it was unbelievable. I mean, there were green turtles everywhere. Now you can, they only come nesting to Cyprus and mainly to North Cyprus and Turkey. Biodiversity includes all living organisms on the planet. Every species is reliant on all the species around it in order to continue its survival, including human beings, which people often don't think about because we don't lead a particularly natural lifestyle anymore. And this doesn't mean that we're no longer reliant on other species. We're reliant on biodiversity for everything from the materials that we use to the air that we breathe. So that's why conservation is so important.